How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, October 29th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Daniil Hunter. The elite defensive end for the Minnesota Vikings turns 27 today, and my intention with this episode is, of course, to shed light on what he's been able to do as a consistent, as a powerful, as a reigning force on that defensive line, especially as he's been a very consistent piece for a Minnesota Vikings defense that has done a very good job at continually sending the Vikings to the playoffs over the past half decade. And of course, Daniil Hunter's consistency is, of course, a, a solid model that defensive linemen have been able to follow. Um, it's been tough for him to, of course, stay on uh, to really kind of stay on this path, of course, to stay this consistent but before this season he played four straight seasons in which he's played every single game uh and then in the last two complete full seasons he played he was named a pro bowler not to mention a second team all pro player in 2018 just to get a sense of what he looks like, he stands at about six foot five, two hundred sixty three. Of course, he's very tall and very long as a defensive end already. Not to mention that he's incredibly quick, fast, and strong with the body that he does have. Considering how many defensive ends there are in football, and the fact that there aren't that many hunt players that can play with the consistency and at a level of Daniil Hunter. Uh, I think it points to how rare it is to find players like Daniil Hunter. So going into his background, he's originally from, or he was born in St. Catherine, Jamaica. His family would end up moving to Texas when he was about eight years old. And of course, growing up in Texas and playing around Texas football, he would eventually find himself getting caught up in the Texas high school um, hype. And of course, you know that tech, that football is very big, especially at the high school level in Texas. After establishing himself as one of the best prospects in the state, he would end up going to play at LSU for three years. He did all of this in 2012, 2013, and 2014 under Les Miles. Um, in his very first season, in his 2012 season, he eventually he did play as a 17-year-old true freshman. He would go. He would play in all 12 games. He would not start a single game. Uh, he would finish his very first freshman season with about 12 tackles on the season. Uh, he would earn his way into the starting lineup. His second season at the, in, at LSU would see himself playing 13 games in a 2013 season under Les Miles, where LSU went 10 and three. They went 10 and three the previous year, finishing with the same about with uh, roughly the same record as they did the previous year. But this year they actually won their bowl. They won the Outback Bowl. They had to beat Iowa in order to do so. In his second year, Daniil Hunter would finish with 57 total tackles on the season as a defensive lineman. He would finish with eight tackles for loss, uh, three sacks, two passes defended, and a forced fumble as well. Uh, this would go on to lead into his junior and final season at LSU in 2014. In what would be Daniil Hunter's age 20 season, he would go on to start 13 games in a season where the LSU Tigers would finish with an 8-5 and five record. They would not finish ranked and they would end up losing to Notre Dame in the Music City Bowl. But in Daniil's Hunter final se Daniil Hunter's final season with the LSU Tigers, he would go on to finish with 73 tackles on the season, his career high at LSU. 13 tackles for loss, the only time he had at least 10 tackles for loss on the season. He would finish with a sack and a half, not as much as he had his sophomore year. He would go on to finish with six passes defended, a career high. He would go on to force a fumble, fumble or recover a fumble for 25 yards, which would go for his only defensive touchdown in college. Uh, following his junior season, he would establish himself as a good enough NFL prospect to be taken with the 88th overall pick in the third round of the 2015 NFL draft. He was drafted by the Minnesota Vikings, but looking at other players that were taken in the 2015 draft ahead of him, especially out of the players that are, of course, on this list of the elite. Amari Cooper was taken by the Oakland Raiders with the fourth overall pick. 
Um, looking at other players, Todd Gurley was taken with the 10th overall pick in this draft. Uh, continuing on, and especially within this round, all-stars like Tyler Lockett, David Johnson for the Arizona Cardinals, those were the other two players that were taken in this specific round that would eventually go on to make the Pro Bowl. But regardless, once Daniil Hunter made it to the or I guess once he made it to the Vikings, he kind of really hit the ground running from there. In his age 21 season, his very first season in the league, Daniil Hunter would go on to start one of the 14 games he played in a season where the Minnesota Vikings finished with an 11-5 and record, won the NFC North, and would eventually go on to clinch the playoffs. This was Mike Zimmer's second season coaching the team. In 2015, in the 14 games he played, Daniil Hunter would finish with 33 combined tackles on the season. He would finish with a forced fumble, and he would finish with six sacks on the year, not to mention eight tackles for loss. At the conclusion of the season, Daniil Hunter was named to the all-rookie team, and the Minnesota Vikings would go on to make the playoffs. Once they made the playoffs, they would end up losing in the wild card round to the Seahawks. This game would finish up 10-9. to This would be the season where the Denver Broncos ended up being the Panthers in Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Following his rookie season, Daniil Hunter would come back to Minnesota for his second season there. In his age 22 season in 2016, this would be the last season in which he wasn't a full-time starter. He started none of the 16 games he played in a season where the Vikings finished with an 8-8 eight eight record and missed the playoffs completely. Daniil Hunter would finish with 56 combined tackles on the season as he had 11 tackles for loss despite not starting a single game. He finished with a safety, a pass defended, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery or a 24-yard fumble recovery and he also re recovered a fumble recovery for, recovered a fumble for a touchdown. Not to mention that before he was a full-time starter as a 22-year-old, he finished with 12 and a half sacks on the season and he wasn't even a full-time starter. That was the moment where the NFL, or at least people that were watching the NFL, turned their heads and at least that was when Daniil Hunter caught their attention. Following his sophomore season in which he would go on to make, uh, which would be featured on a, on a couple of all under 25 teams, he would go on to become a full-time starter in his third season in the league in his age 23 season in 2017. Uh, Daniil Hunter would start all 16 games in a season where the Vikings would finish with a 13-3 and record. They would win the NFC North for the second time since he'd been there and make the, and they, of course, would make the playoffs. They have not won the NFC North since 2017, but looking into that season itself, in his first season as a starter, Daniil Hunter would finish with 45 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, which at that point was a career high in tackles for loss. He would go on to finish with two passes defended. He would force a fumble for the third year in a row, and he would recover a fumble for the second year in a row. He would see his sack numbers dip from 12 and a half to seven, but of course, as a full-time starter, he would see his numbers um, start to level out. At the conclusion of the 2017 season, the Minnesota Vikings would go on to make the divisional round, where they would end up beating the New Orleans Saints for the first time uh, this would be a big game for them. And then they would end up losing in the conference championship to the Eagles, who eventually went on to beat the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl that year. Um, following this 2017 season, Daniil Hunter would start his campaign as a pro bowler. In 2018, in his age 24 season, he would start all 16 games in a season where the Vikings would finish with an 8-7-1 record. They would miss the playoffs for the second time in his career. But of course, they, had a, they, they have not had a losing record at, while Daniil Hunter was playing in the lineup. In 2018, in the, all the 16 games he played, he would finish with 72 tackles on the season, which is the most tackle Daniil Hunter has ever put together in a season to date, even now. He would finish with 21 tackles for loss, which is the only time in his career he's ever eclipsed 20 tackles for loss. Third season in a row, he's at at least 10. 
He would also go on to finish with a 32-yard fumble recovery and the second defensive touchdown of his NFL career. He also finished with 14 and a half sacks, which would go down as a career high for him. He would finish the season being named a Pro Bowler for the very first time in his NFL career. Not only that, he would go on to make the second team all pro, showing that if he wasn't even like the best player at his position, he was the second best. Considering that there's 32 teams in the NFL, that's an impressive feat to hit. Um, and then after the season, of course, the Vikings would not make the playoffs, but Daniil Hunter will go on to return as a starter in the 2019 season, and he proved that his 2018 season wasn't a fluke. In his age 25 season, which is Daniil Hunter's last complete game that he's played in the NFL, um, he would go on to start all 16 games in a season where the Minnesota Vikings would finish with a 10-6 and record. They would not win the division, but they would still go on to make the playoffs. This is the last time that the Vikings have made the playoffs as a team. Um, but within that season himself, as a full-time starter for the third year in a row, Daniil Hunter would finish with 70 tackles on the season, which is two less than he did the previous year. He had 15 tackles for loss which is six less than he had his first all-star season. He would finish with three forced fumbles, which is his career high in forced fumbles in a season, the first time he's ever finished with more than one. He would also finish with a four-yard fumble recovery as well. He would finish with just as many sacks as he had the previous year, 14 and a half. His combined 29 sacks over those two years, of course, would lead to him being named an all-star in both those seasons. And following that season, the Minnesota Vikings would compete in the playoffs for the last time that Daniel Hunter's been in the playoffs. They would end up beating the Saints in the in overtime, this time in the Superdome, to make it to the next round where they would eventually lose in the divisional round to the San Francisco 49ers, who eventually went on to the Super Bowl to lose to the Chiefs after they held a fourth quarter lead. Following the 2019 season in which he was named a Pro Bowler for the second time, he would miss the entire 2020 season as he was placed on the injured reserve with a neck injury prior to the beginning of the season starting. He had to undergo season-ending surgery to clean up a herniated disc in his neck, according to Wikipedia. Um, but So, of course, he would go on to miss the 2020 season, this past full season, which, of course, was impacted by COVID-19 to the point where every team still played, but of course they played without fans. And of course that transitions us into Daniil Hunter's age 27 season, which he is currently playing right now, in which he started all six of the game he's played for, for a Minnesota Vikings team, which at the moment is currently sitting on a three and three record. Their next matchup will take place on Sunday, October 31st, or Halloween. That matchup will take place on 820 on NBC Network on primetime. As the Vikings, currently looking at where they are, are holding the second best record in the NFC North as a win could do a lot for them. Um, but in the six games he's played, Daniil Hunter has 33 tackles alongside six tackles for loss and six sacks on the season. So, of course... He's doing a really good job of making sure that he does what he needs to do to make sure that the Vikings are winning. But of course, that paints a really big picture of the type of player that Daniil Hunter has been. The last two full seasons he's played in the league, he's finished with 14 and a half sacks. Not to mention that he's had a whole other season in which he finished with double digit sacks despite not being a starter. But it shows that Daniil Hunter, when he plays, can be a very vital chip. And not only that, not only is he a good enough defensive end to make the NFL in the first place, he is a good enough defensive end, a great enough defensive end to break off uh, and create separation amongst himself and other defensive ends in the sport and establish himself as an elite talent at that position. I want to thank everybody for listening to all 14, 15 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well, and once all of today's matchups and exhibitions are done, I will come back tomorrow with another episode on Saturday, October 30th. Once again, I want to thank everyone for listening to The Elite. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with another episode tomorrow. Um, with that said, thanks for listening to my piece, and peace out. I'll catch you tomorrow.